He was an eccentric who always appeared slightly uncomfortable in the headlights of the media, a conservative cabinet minister since way back in 1962, who later remarked, it was only in April 1974 that I converted to conservatism. I thought I was a conservative, but now I see there was not really one at all. He was a shy person who nonetheless blazed a trail for Margaret Thatcher and intellectually made the weather in a series of speeches before she became leader in 1975. He was Sir Keith Joseph. Thatcherism did not just appear out of the blue in 1979, and neither was it the product of just one mind. Many contributed to its formulation, and one of the most significant was Keith Joseph, the MP for Leeds North East. Margaret Thatcher later described him as England's greatest man. On the face of it, Keith Joseph came from an impeccably establishment background. His father headed the vast construction company Bovis, and he later went on to serve as Lord Mayor of London and finally was created a baronet. The young Keith, born in January uh, 1918, was educated at Harrow and Oxford, where he studied law. He was more interested in those days in cricket than politics. After the war, he was called to the bar and went on to serve as chairman of his family business, the Bogus Construction Company. So far, so conventional. However, when he entered the House of Commons for the first time in February 1956, following a by-election, he was one of only two Jewish Conservative MPs. It would remain that way for the next 14 years. As a result, he always felt something of an outsider. It did not stop his advance within the Conservative ranks, but perhaps it gave him a certain affinity with one of the few female members uh, to join the House in 1959, Margaret Thatcher. She certainly thought that they were both outside the establishment club of the time. Keith Joseph's first appointment was as Minister of Housing and Local Government in the Macmillan Government, and he introduced a massive construction programme of state housing. In years to come, there was uh, discussion over the merit of that particular strategy, but then hindsight's a different thing. In opposition, the new leader, Edward Heath, appointed Joseph as Shadow Secretary of State for Social Services, and he would serve as Secretary of State for Social Services from 1970 to the fall of the government in February 1974. He later admitted that he had contributed to the expansion and the reach of the state. It seems strange that a man so associated with rolling back the front of the state should come out as such a high-spending ministry as this. Joseph would doubtlessly have said that working at this department gave him greater insight into the expanding role of government and society generally. During the Heath years, Margaret Thatcher and Keith Joseph established a close working relationship within the Cabinet. They had similar views on the reasons for the failure of Heath and both started making plans for the future. Soon after the collapse of Edward Heath's government, Margaret Thatcher and Keith Joseph worked together to form and establish the Centre for Policy Studies. This would be the first independent think tank dedicated to formulating policy suggestions for the Conservative Party, but outside the party bureaucracy. Until that time, the Conservative Party pretty much exclusively relied upon the Conservative Research Department based at Smith Square, the old Conservative Central Office, and owned by the Conservative Party. The trouble was, the Conservative Research Department was servile to the whims and policy requests of its leaders. Over 30, 40 years on now from this time, it's hard to recall the significance of the establishment of the CPS. Keith Joseph was certainly on a roll in 1974 to 1976, he visited the Institute for Economic Affairs and began to study the works of Milton Friedman, particularly with regards to monetary control, and he started making speeches while still a member of Heath's defeated cabinet. He was described by one journalist as the prophet come down from the mountain. In June 1974, he declared, since the Second World War, uh, we've had altogether too much socialism. He observed that the Conservative Party in government for half of that period had spent most of its time trying to make semi-socialism work. It had failed, and it was now time for a radical break with the past. He believed that Heath's economic strategy had led to the abandonment of sound money policies, which had, in turn, led to rocketing inflation. This had been done out of fear of unemployment. Joseph said that spending should be cut and accepted that jobless total may rise temporarily. This may not be seen as much today, but it was explosive at the time when all political parties were committed to full employment. Joseph pointed out that there were two main sectors to the economy, the wealth producing and the wealth consuming. The wealth producing included manufacturing, banking, commercial services and retail, all aimed at making a profit. The wealth consuming was really government-run services. 
The economy declines, he suggested, when the wealth producing is outperformed by the wealth consuming. Keith Joseph was being talked of at this time as a future Conservative Party leader, but his heart was not really in it, and he was intelligent enough to know his own presentational limitations. He said years later that the, of the possibility of becoming Prime Minister, it would have been a disaster for the party, the country and me, if only other unsuitable aspirants had had such foresight. Joseph plunged himself into controversy in the mid-1970s with a speech arguing that the poor, and particularly those solely dependent upon benefits for support, should stop having so many children. The speech contained the unfortunate phrase, the balance of our human stock is threatened. It was said that the speech prevented him from taking up the post of Shadow Chancellor of the Exchequer. However, he became Secretary of State for Industry and started planning the privatisation programme which would take off in the 1980s. And then from 1981 to 87 he served as Secretary of State for Education. I only ever met Keith Joseph once and it was actually when I was at school. I told him that I was taking politics A-level. As Secretary of State for Education he told me never thought that politics would become an A-level. He was a very eccentric character and one story that circulated, which is probably completely untrue and apocryphal, was that stuck in traffic he jumped out of the car with his ministerial aide and, in urgency to get to a cabinet meeting, went on to the London Underground. Once he got in the underground carriage, he said to his civil servant, right, where's the buffet car? This is probably untrue again, an apocryphal story. But people said that he enjoyed eating boiled eggs in copious quantities, and the press dubbed him the Mad Monk for his strong ideological convictions. Keith Joseph retired from the House of Commons in 1987 and went to the House of Lords. He died on the 10th of December 1994. He was the man who acted as Margaret Thatcher's John the Baptist. He discussed politics and philosophy with her and guided her in the right direction. He was an ideological mentor, Keith Joseph.